to uh, speak to us about what would be the government perspective, Ajay Kumar Bhalla, Power Secretary, joins us now. There are so many questions to ask you, but let me start first uh, with this potential uh, bunch of companies that uh, have stressed loans. Uh, uh, if not resolved, uh, they will be taken to the NCLT. Uh, what's the government's view? So many, probably 30, 35 companies coming to the NCLT. See, some of these companies are already in the process of getting resolved. If you recall, uh, some time back there was an auction of uh, coal linkage Shakti to about 10 plants. Now that the coal has started flowing, I mean FSAs have been signed, uh, PPAs have been revised and uh, those plants are supposed to be turning around now. So I mean uh, like there are different reasons for different plants, so wherever possible we are addressing those. Now the areas like uh, uh, lack of equity by the promoters, bankers are looking at it whether the change of ownership can help. I mean they have about six months time to do it. In that time if they are able to find a new buyer, they will be able to do it. Now there are some cases like where the coal blocks have got into disputes after, despite auction because of aggressive uh, bids by some of the promoters. Uh, now there, these are the areas where again uh, Shakti policy has uh, catered for uh, coal linkage or e-auction of coal which can address to these plants also. And on top of that what we are doing as a pilot which I mentioned earlier also, the about 2500 megawatt aggregation we are trying to do as a pilot to see whether in medium term this can bring in some PPAs and uh, some of these plants can sell their power. So that uh, process is ready. PFC on behalf of government would be doing this uh, tendering uh, through an aggregator. If, let's see what happens in that case. So there are different uh, uh, interventions we have made at different points. Okay, well actually uh, if I looked at the APPAI's report, uh, there are 51 gigawatts, 51,000 megawatts that are under stress. Of this, if you take away Mundra, mm -hmm. because uh, both Tata's and Adani's are deep-pocketed investors, uh, then you are still left with 43,000 megawatts, sir. You're talking about 2,500. Of this 43,000, probably about uh, 9,000 are gas-based plants where really uh, uh, there isn't any hope at all that uh, anything will happen. No, gas-based is 10,581 megawatts. Uh, there, are, there are remaining 19,700 megawatts which have uh, a projects with domestic coal but no PPA, imported coal but no PPA, and projects with no coal and no PPA. Together, it is 19,700 plus 10,500 gas. We are looking at, you know, at least 32,000. Where, who will buy if there is no PPA? What's the government's answer to those 30, 32,000 megawatts? See, originally, I mean, there was coal-based stress was about 40,000 megawatts, out of which, because of Shakti, more than 10,000 has already been retrieved. Mm. And uh, wherever uh, we are able to get some this thing, uh, uh, additional power, there has been growth in the recent times. And uh, in I, I exchange also, the prices are going up, and some of these plants should, would be able to sell coal in the exchange also. So demand is on the up. I mean, let's see how it goes. I mean, as I said, 10,000 megawatts have been brought out of uh, coal intervention only. Let's see where, as a trial if we can do little more for the coal-based plants. And if it picks up, then definitely we'll repeat the pilot and then it becomes a system that uh, P Discom start contracting on a medium-term basis. Okay, I, to just uh, take that point forward, uh, Mr. Bhalla, if you could put in context the current uh, demand supply situation. I'm looking at the, <clears throat> the exchange. Uh, even today, clearing rates at, on IEX are about three and a half thereabouts. And then there have been reports because spot rates are rising and maybe discoms are willing to now do PPAs. So that could, of course, alleviate stress for a lot of uh, entities that can't find uh, power buyers. So if you could just, you know, connect the dots for us and put it in context. See, there, uh, there has been a little shortage of coal in some of the power plants and some of the power had to be backed on because of uh, high demand but lack of uh, coal availability in some power plants. So that definitely has pushed the coal prices in the uh, power prices in the exchange. You know, exchange is a very good indicator of stock of coal in the power plants. But now, I mean, in the month of March, we have almost on an average got 274 rakes per day and we have been able to build the stocks of about 16 plus million tons in the power plants, which is about 10 days stock. 
Uh, still, some of the plants are uh, with lesser uh, stock also. Uh, but efforts are on to build on. But in month of January, February and March, the growth has been more than 5% uh, month to month basis. Overall growth definitely in the country is 5.2%. And coal based growth is 4.5% if we discount the renewables out of it. Now in that case, I mean, uh, there is definitely uh, utilization of coal also was very, very high. For few months in the year, the coal consumption was more than the coal receipt. Mm -hmm. So the stocks got depleted in the first few months of the financial year. Mm -hmm. But now again, we have built up the stocks. Now with this, I mean, the other indication is that yes, there is a growth and some of these plants are turning around. Let me tell you that state governments have excess PPAs already in their kitty. Mm. And some of the state government discoms had surrendered the PPAs to us at times saying that we don't want this coal. The trend is reversing. We have uh, now request from the state governments to, to uh, get back their uh, quota which was allotted earlier and uh, start getting power. Already, I mean, our DVC and NTPC are uh, getting these PPAs signed. Okay. Uh, no, I take your point, sir, that uh, PPAs are, uh, more PPAs would be an answer. But uh, we don't have discoms that have deep pockets and we don't have state governments that have deep pockets. So, uh, I mean, I'm still coming back to my first question. The clock has started ticking. March 1st, the Reserve Bank's clock started and it ends on September 30th. At that time, 32,000 megawatts, possibly or even more, could come to the NCLT. Should there not be an overarching plan? Separately, the State Bank of uh, India chairman has also written to the government about the Mundra plant and, you know, whether you can continue to expect even big groups like Tata's and Adani's to run a plant which every unit that is produced is going to create a loss for them. So really two questions for you. Does the government of India have anything for that 32,000 which will come to the NCLT first? As I said, I mean, our interventions are basically to facilitate coal availability. Sir, that and, was, yeah, uh, in, uh, Mr. Bhalla, you know, I have taken your point on that, sir. Uh, extra PPAs. Sir, I have taken your point on that. You know, 10,000 megawatts has brought uh, the amount of stress probably right. from, you know, 45,000 to uh, closer to 35,000. But that 35,000 is still left. And you have all of five months or less than that, four and a half months for that to yeah. be resolved. So is there some national, you know, yeah, bad see, bank yeah. that no, can no, buy tell this? Tell me, tell me a plant. See, then let's, let's look at the, some of the cases. If the promoter had bid an aggressive PPA and the uh, tariff is so low, I mean, uh, even if it is taken over by another owner, it will not be able to sell power the, uh, at that price. It will not be viable to sell the power at uh, that price because he's not able to service the debt. So bankers have looked at many of these plants and have put them on uh, either SDR or S4A or different options which were available to them. Wherever takers are there, bankers are settling with them and hopefully by September they would be able to. But wherever they, there are no takers for these plants, I don't think we have any other alternative but to go to NCLT. Sir, last simple question, really one fails to understand. The sanctity of PPAs, and I know we've discussed this in the past as well, that when rates shoot up, uh, spot rates shoot up, uh, now you're saying that states are willing to consider PPAs again. When rates are down, they throw their hands up and say that no, we'd rather buy from the spot market. Are you looking at a permanent fix for this? Because how does a, you know, a corporation run a power plant without having any sanctity to the power purchase agreement? No, definitely we are. We have not accepted any state government surrendering PPAs just like that. Mm. And uh, uh, we have insisted upon uh, this power to be bought under the PPA. It's a pure contract between the two parties which needs to be honored. Government of India has been very, very clearly mentioning it to the state governments and discoms that they have to honor the power purchase agreements which they have uh, signed. So, I mean, uh, there are in some PPAs there were uh, clauses to mutually sort of come out of the power purchase agreements, which some of the states have used. And uh, even uh, uh, the generator has also accepted the compensation payments and all. So those are the, uh, I mean, purely contractual clauses. One has to look at each case separately and look at it. As far as Government of India is concerned, we our advisory, our policy is very clear that uh, these PPAs need to be honored. These are contractual commitments of the discounts. Okay, so, uh, so uh, you will be okay with uh, uh, 32,000 megawatts going for liquidation? Not NCLT, liquidation. Not all will not go for liquidation. As I said, bankers, yeah, I'm saying this is not go to NCLT also. Some of these plants are under uh, already uh, restructuring with the bankers. 
and it was under restructuring in the previous uh, before the RBI circular. So bankers, some of the places bankers are hopeful. I mean, I may not have progress of each and every plant right now with me, but uh, we understand from our uh, PFC, REC type of NBFCs that they, some of the projects could be which are easily uh, retrievable. Bankers would be able to provide it; they get a re uh, reasonable uh, value for it. Okay, so how many uh, uh, from that APPA I list, which you must be very familiar with, uh, how many do you think can be salvaged? And how many may uh, go to NCLT and liquidation? I, it, it, it will be difficult for me to say uh, because I don't have uh, the status of each and every plant up to date with me. But there are efforts going on in the plants which are possible to be retrieved. Will and, half uh, be some saved? Some of the plants sir? where promoters have lost all, uh, I mean, uh, no equity available. Uh, it's very difficult to put numbers. As I said, each plant has a different problem. In some places, the discom dues could be a problem, and there we are intervening and trying to get the discoms release payments to these plants. In some cases, the equity has run dry. I mean, bankers are looking at a new owner. Like this, there are different uh, baskets. I mean, one has to look at which, what can be retrieved and what cannot be. Can you leave us and with let's a... see by September, some of these definitely will uh, turn around. So, so sir, we, we take your point that all of it will not go for liquidation. Can you leave us with a love rough ratio where you think that within the NCLT process, there will be resolution? There will be buyers and, you know, some of the issues, whether it's PPAs, whether it's coal availability, you will, or discom payments will be able to intervene and solve. So, therefore, the new buyer has reason to buy the asset. And what might, the residual that might end up in liquidation. So, maybe some, some numbers, some guidance on this, sir. No, I mean, very difficult to say. As I said, some of the plants where construction has just started and nothing much is available on the ground, uh, bank, bankers also won't be able to find a solution to it. So those plants definitely go to NCLT. But the plants which are commissioned, which are having some uh, financial issues, bankers uh, can retrieve it. Uh, definitely bankers are def interested in not losing the money which they have put in these plants. So they would like to retrieve the, uh, whatever is mm -hmm. possible. And whatever assistance is required from the government, government is willing to provide that. We are ready with whatever possibility of uh, facilitation is required, we, we would do that. Okay, so we will have occasion to invite you yet again, sir, when you have more clarity on how many plants can be saved. But at the moment, it is 51,800 megawatts that are completely built and stressed and another 23,091 which are under construction and are going to this, get stressed. So, if you're looking let, at let me add, let me add the private plants, the PLF for the 17, 18 is on the up. They have crossed the 60 percent mark also in this financial year. Okay, yes. So, there is, a, there's, there is definitely a turnaround of uh, PLF yeah. increasing beyond 60. Yeah, now. I take your point, sir, 61 percent, but uh, that's still a, a long way off from making them break even. Uh, thank you very much for your patience and for speaking to us at CNBC TV 18.